Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Migliori, joined by Ashley Mayu, and it's so nice to get to work with you. I've seen you on the uh, feed from Fort Erie, and we've got a great card to talk about. Five stakes in a row, races five through nine, starting out with race five, the Miracle Wood going a mile for three-year-olds. And there's a logical favorite here, the two always mining, and I know you like this horse. Love this horse's performance in the haft. I thought the horse ran a great race, liked the time in that one, and, you know, I think the extra furlong shouldn't really hurt this runner, and I have to like the buyer numbers consistently. I kind of went away from this horse, and I do think this is the best horse in the race, and I went to the outside horse, the six gray magician, horse shipping in from Southern California, trainer Peter Miller brings Flavian Pratt along. I just this horse this horse might trip out. I think there's a lot of speed sign on. Always mining might have company up front. And if that happens, I think the horse to benefit might be Gray Magician. But I've got it six two four five and I know you've got it two six. Yeah, I ended up going two four six in this one. Oh, two, four, I six. ended up changing it a little bit. My concern with Great Magician on the outside, that last race really didn't do much for me. I understand the pace was a little hot, but the good thing for this one is Flavian Pratt is climbing back aboard. They've, you know, had an impressive maiden score together. Well, I think he could trip out. We'll see. It'll be interesting and might be a barometer of Peter Miller's runner later in the afternoon. Uh, certainly a different surface for the first time here at Laurel from Santa Anita. Race six, seven furlongs, the wide country for three-year-old fillies. I'm not in the habit of picking maidens in stake races, but painted by numbers probably shouldn't be a maiden. Her last race, just a very tough trip. Didn't get any position out of the gate. Was stuck behind horses, kind of all dressed up with nowhere to go. And I thought if she had a different trip, she would have won last time. Yeah, I could see her down the back stretch. She just did not settle nicely. She was really eager and keen to go forward early, but they decided to, you know, hold back a little bit on her and kind of aggravated her a bit. Even her race before that, she was almost got the job done as well. She was on the lead at one point. I couldn't endorse her on the top spot, being a maiden in a stakes race, so I did go to the seven, two dozen roses. Todd Pletcher sends this runner out. Found the most recent win here at Laurel to be quite impressive. Turning for ho home, I wasn't sure that she was going to get the job done. Seemed a little bit lazy, and then when she actually got running, her best strides were very late, so the extra furlong definitely should benefit her. And you certainly have to elevate her. She has a win over the track. I like that angle. I like when horses have a little experience over the track. Painted by numbers, comes back on short rest, gets an inside post. She is my top selection. Some reservations there, but uh, I have the, s the seven, two dozen roses, excuse me, pick third. All right, so race seven, this kicks off our late 50 cent pick four, and this is the John D. Campbell at a distance of one mile and one eighth. This race, we're pretty much in sync here with the three, nine, six on top. The three being the five to one unbridled Juan. Thought the most recent race at Gulfstream was a little short for him, needed the extra distance, and today is definitely going to get that. And the class on this horse, we look at the races he's running, he, he's very classy and he really likes Laurel Park. Loves Laurel. He's two for two, certainly the horse for course angle. I love his trainer, Jose Corrales, a, a guy I actually rode with who's now become a very successful trainer. I just think there's a lot of upside here, and I hope we get anywhere close to the 5-1 to one morning line. I think we'll be lucky. I'm not sure that'll be the case. We also look to the 9, Monongahela, coming out of the Queens County. Nice second place finish. This horse is kind of lazy on the back stretch, just kind of knows he's going to get the job done. It takes a while to get moving. So in this race, when you see the replay, when he turned for home, he really had to swing wide and hit his best strides late. Now he's a horse that's kind of like a bicycle. If you're not pedaling, he's not running. He gets Trevor McCarthy, a young rider I'm very impressed with, very talented. One thing that made me put him underneath, he's a horse that has five wins, nine seconds, and it just makes me question – you know, his desire at crunch time, but Monongahela is certainly logical, and he does get a little bit of pace to run at. Yeah, and I do like the trainer change here. Jason Service takes this one over, and it's a pretty impressive number, 39% with new runners in the barn. Yeah, so this is a good competitive big field all day, good competitive big fields. And let's move on to race eight, the seven furlong General George, a grade three, $250,000 purse. And I think this was the only race that you and I really didn't kind of sync up. I really like the six horse here, still having fun, because I think there's a lot of speed signed on here. Tim Keefe, a trainer that's stable to here. This horse is a, basically a hometown product, and I just think he's going to get the right setup. Yeah, I really like this horse workout. I thought the drill was really nice in 101. Not too much, but definitely looked eager. And the thing that I liked is there was some company in the lane for him, and he just blew by them in the final stages. Uh, I went in a different direction here. I go to the number 13 something awesome 
really just think this horse was outclassed last time in the Pegasus. Didn't really belong in the race. Um, a little too classy in the grade one company, but, you know, he did win the Charlestown Classic quite nicely. Does like Laurel Park with four wins from six starts. And I, I think he, you know, deserves a good look in here. Well, he certainly loves Laurel. And again, another Jose Corrales <laughs> trainee. Outside posts, I favor them in the elongated one-turn races, so he could work out the right kind of trip. I was uh, looking at the seven-horse, Lakai, who was a runner-up in the DeFrancis Dash earlier in the year here at Laurel. I was here, and I was very impressed with his effort that day. And I thought if Switzerland, the winner of the DeFrancis Dash, was in here, he would be very competitive. So I put him underneath. What do you think of the three-horse uncontested with that big return? My little concern with this would be the second start since March, but when you see this, you know, the stats for this horse in general, very strong, and that hundred buyer last time out after setting a blistering half mile and 44 and two really caught my eye, but that's going six furlongs, so there's a little bit to consider there with the added distance. Well, certainly an eye-popping kind of breakout race for him last time. Let's see if he can repeat that. He's going to have to to compete with this field. Well, race nine is the seven furlong, $250,000. Barbara Fritchie, a grade three, always a terrific race, one of those bright, shining spots in the middle of winter. And uh, you're on a horse that has an extremely impressive resume. Yeah, 10 wins from 11 starts for late night powwow. Really like this horse coming into this race with two wins here at Laurel Park. The races at Charlestown were also impressive, but I think this horse has really done her best performances in runnings here at Laurel. And then that last race, I mean, she won really nicely over by six lengths in there, and she's four for four at the distance. So I can't, you know, throw her out in here. Well, the fact that she's two for two at Laurel, four for four at the distance, has tactical speed, but doesn't have to be a part of the pace if it gets hot. She's just very versatile. Um, and the fact that she can string together this many wins, I think she raises her game as she needs to. So I picked her second, though. I went with the four horse, Dawn the Destroyer, shipping in for trainer Kira McLaughlin from New York. I thought she was super impressive in the Interboro. It seems like Junior Alvarado's kind of found the key to her. She wants to make that one run. I thought there was enough speed signed on here. I, it was really hard to pick against the two late night powwow, but I thought the four, Dawn the Destroyer, could have a little bit of upside at maybe a little bit of a better price. Yeah, she started coming around late in 2018 with that win in that optional claiming event. And then, like you said, that most recent race, she had that one move, ran really nicely. You know, the horse shipping in from California, the one spiced perfection from Peter Miller. I, I'm just the inside post and the first time on a deeper surface like Laurel coming out of Santa Anita. I, I thought this was a horse that I could take a stab against. I know you also had a price play towards the outside. Yes, I used the number nine, Timeless Curls. Dave Cap Dale Capuana has done a great job with this runner. I mean, she's got another impressive record here at Laurel. And her first time taking it on that stakes company was a very nice win. She just drew off in the end. And at 15 to 1, I have to think maybe she'll be part of the trifecta. Well, a lot of ways you can go in a very deep, competitive Barbara Fritchie field. We end up our card with race 10. This is where the pick four ends. I only went too deep on my ticket. I went with the morning line favorite, the number four. I just think this horse looks to be the class of the field. Wasn't it, you know, really impressed with the nine to five morning line, and I'm not even sure we'll get that. Then I also went to the horse on the rail. Really not impressed with the rail position in here, but I loved the eight to one price on this one. Has been facing, you know, this level before. And I do like this horse, even though the, you know, when we look at the statistics, it might not suggest second off the layoff, but her best race ended up being second off the layoff three starts ago where she ran a 71 buyer. I think you'd have to go a little bit deep in this mm -hmm. race, hopefully to complete your pick four. I kind of thought the eight horse had a look. Toma from the Mark Reed barn. I thought this horse rallied well last time. I like that this horse is drawn towards the outside. Side. And at 10 to 1, I just thought this was a horse I would have to use on my ticket. Yeah, definitely have to go for prices in here. There looked like there might have been an upset in here. So I, I do agree with you that horse might have a shot. Well, it should be a great day of racing, deep competitive fields, and plenty of opportunities to leave Laurel with a little bit of healthier <laughs> pockets, if you will. Have a great day of racing, and we should have a terrific card.